Pathmark is the intelligent tool for website lead generation. With increasing online competition, over 98% of website visitors don't convert. The ability to successfully show your value proposition and support visitors in their buying journey separates you from the competition online. Pathmonk qualifies and converts leads on your website by figuring out where they are in the buying journey and influencing them in key decision moments with relevant micro experiences like case studies, intro videos, and much more. Stay relevant to your visitors and increase conversions by 50%. Add Pathmonk to your website in seconds. Let the AI do all the work and get access to 50% more qualified leads while you keep doing marketing and sales as usual. Check us on Pathmonk.com. Welcome to today's episode. Let's give a, a, a good welcome to Gary from Legal Hat, co-founder with them. How are you doing today, Gary? Doing great. Happy to be here. Uh, it's great to have you on. And well, I'm sure our listeners are tuning in, wondering what Legal Hat is all about. So uh, let's kick it off with that. In your own words, can you tell us a little bit more? Absolutely. So we at Legal Hat are building AI agents that help automate legal and compliance tasks for businesses. Uh, when, you know, when people hear about legal, I like to kind of double click a little bit there. So the way we see legal are three main types. So there's the legal that are handled by outside firms. Uh, you know, you will hire a firm to do some kind of litigation for you and all other really intense work. Some businesses have the second bucket, which is in-house counsel. And then the third bucket, which actually makes up the majority of legal tasks that are done within businesses, is not even done by a lawyer, whether internal or external counsel. And that's what we're focused on, essentially helping all the people that are trained to do legal work don't want to do legal work, have other responsibilities, but somehow end up doing all of that work at organizations. We're helping them automate it with AI agents that are really specific, specific on certain tasks and nuanced and understand the business itself. I uh, definitely think uh, th th there's companies out there and a couple of, you know, salespeople and operations, customer success that, you know, at, at one point, you know, they got that little burden. So uh, I'll awesome to hear that. Yeah. So that... Um, so that way our listeners could get a good understanding here of, of, of legal hat then Gary, uh, I mean, you, you mentioned, but is there like that key problem that is, would that be the key problem that you guys like to solve for clients? Yeah. So we are doing the last mile on legal operations work. So, you know, classic example being there's so much information trapped in contracts yeah, and maybe you have lawyers doing incredible legal strategy, putting together a contract to safeguard all the parties in a in an agreement. Now, once that is signed, you mean ask anybody, what happens is they forget about the contract immediately. All that in all that work that the lawyers did, all those protections, all that, you know, really creative work done gets lost. And what is meant to be done is that legal contract is meant to be a strategy of sorts, right? It's meant to be let's make sure we have touch points and regulations um, and have protections in there. So what we do is we use AI to unpack that contract and then reach out and make sure that everything within the contract is being followed appropriately. You know, naturally that lends us to more of the, you know, complex organizations, not so much uh, a mom and pop shop, but, you know, organizations that have complex and bespoke contracts with other business entities. Definitely. All right. Awesome. So then um, as far as uh, some clientele, is there a vertical segment? Is there an ideal ICP for you guys? So we're in a few uh, industries. The focus is, I mean, naturally, businesses that have you know, repetitive, complex legal tasks, right? So they're doing a lot of them. They're not they're repeatable, but they're different every single time. So because of that, we're focused on three main ones, you know, technology services, because B2B SaaS, a lot of negotiations happens there, but they have privacy and other elements. Uh, we're also in construction and manufacturing, just because they have a lot of services that are related where there's project management tools in there in the contracts uh, and a lot of you know, nuance it baked into that. The third is the one that we're you know, really expanding and growing fast in is in franchising. And franchising is pretty interesting in that, I don't know, I don't know how much you know about it, but it's kind of one central uh, entity, which is a franchise door. And they really quickly branch out to hundreds, sometimes thousands of what's called franchisees. So because of that relationship, you have two business entities with a whole lot of legal protections and operation manual and a lot of, you know, a lot of structure baked in. And it's very, very, very hard 
to enforce or understand or get visibility into how the two businesses are operating, even though they're meant to be lockstep. So what we're building is tools that unpack those contracts into you know a list of things that are required of both parties, and then goes out and pulls that information and verifies it with no intervention from people. So it's kind of on autopilot for everybody and they can get back to their craft. Okay, nicely done. All right, perfect, awesome. So then, uh, uh, I mean, what would you say then is a top client acquisition channel that for legal there had? So right now it's a lot of, you know, in person. We are, we are a young company, right? We're not a household name yet. Uh, because of that, a lot of our acquisition is meant to be, you know, face-to-face, getting to conferences, meeting the folks, uh, but then also really relying on our referrals. And referrals can come from previous customers or existing customers, uh, from the their uh, advisors. You know, we meet consultants that advise those potential customers and making sure that they understand our value. And then also, you know, advisors of legal ad. Uh, we do do a fair bit on some social media, uh, but the referral network has been the primary uh, lead gen. Okay, awesome. And so that and, and that way, when our uh, the listeners who are tuned in could go ahead and visit you guys, they could always check you out at legalhat.com. What mm-hmm. role does the website then play for client acquisition, Gary? Sure. So I, I think that our website is incredibly important. Uh, if you, I'm thinking about it, you know, B2B sales, you know, you're, you're talking to the customer and a lot of this conversation based in the absence of me being in the room, which is most of the time, there's only, you know, there's a primary place for where you go to learn about legal hat. And, you know, if my potential buyer is trying to check out legal hat, they will go to legalhat.com And it's kind of like a take home one page on what we are as a business. Um, so with that, you know, I think it's really important that our website and the narrative I tell customers, investors, everybody is consistent. And in that way, because it's the constant public facing part of the business, it is kind of that grounding element in our messaging and our value. Very great. And so on that note, then is there any tools or tips or methods that you would recommend to our listeners as far as some website lead generation? Sure. Um, you know, we try to make sure that this is true for website, but this is true for, I think every interaction, which, you know, there has to be in, in positive interaction at every part of the website, just like when you're talking to someone that you want them to have a positive impact and that can take a whole, whole range of forms, you know, first can be, it can be informative, right? Teach them something new. Um, that can be true for an interaction that could be true for a website. Um, it could be something that's customized and really makes them feel heard as an audience. Again, true for both channels. Um, interactivity, where you're asking questions or asking them for an input and reacting to it. Um, and it, it could be something as simple as just being visually pleasant or in you know, conversation pleasant in other forms. But it's kind of, you know, the ability to make sure that it's a pleasant interaction, informative, or makes them feel good at every step of the way. Okay, great, great to hear that from you, uh, Gary. And uh, well, let's switch gears a little bit then, and let's talk about you yeah. as a leader. Yeah, you being the co-founder there for, for Lego Hat. What are some key tasks you like to focus on your day-to-day work? So, I would say I spend a good portion of my day storytelling, and the reason is, you know, uh, early early companies, a lot of it is, you know, forming the vision, and, and the vision comes from you know, working with my co-founders or our customers and with our customers, a lot of the storytelling is trying to tell their story back to them to make sure I heard them right. Uh, but talking to employees, investors. So a lot of what I, you know, a lot of what I spend my day on is, you know, either telling the story of legal hat, telling the story where legal hat will go, uh, but also kind of tweaking it to the, you know, a lot of the people around me and kind of their input. So, uh, that said, right, a lot of my day is meetings, uh, naturally, uh, meeting with uh, potential customers uh, and investors and the like. And then a lot of it is, you know, the written communication, whether it be our website or our email, making sure that that story that we're telling or crafting and, and you're changing along the way, that that story is being consistent and that everybody has, you know, a say in it. So a lot of that is crafting the narratives in whatever channel I'm using for it. That's the important. And, uh, and, and in between those times, then Gary, um, is there a preferred channel that you like to go with to stay updated with, uh, that all the marketing trends, strategies, uh, going out there? 
Yeah, I would say, I would say I do spend some time on Twitter X uh, and LinkedIn. I would say that there are specifically on those two channels, there are a lot of folks that largely I've met, um, you know, I've connected with over the past few years that I follow. And I, I like to check in on, you know, what they're reposting and then, you know, posting, but also where they're commenting. I, I think that there's a lot of insight seeing where different people in my network are, you know, what kind of conversations they're engaging. And then that leads me to, you know, an interesting person I've never heard of before and you know, something that they are posting. And I think this is a great way to consume content is not just listen to what people say in a more posting forum, but also what people are saying in like a comment and, uh, you know, a sub thread. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that with, with, with our listeners. And well, let's jump into our next section then here, Gary, which is a rapid fire question rounds. Uh, are you ready for them? Sure. Awesome. Then, uh, Gary, first off then is what is the last book that you read? I, I just finished Exhalation by Ted Chiang. Uh, it's a short, it's a series of short stories there. Um, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, they're all, uh, they're all a little sci-fi ish, but rather than being more about a narrative, I, I think he crafts short stories that are crafted around an idea. So it, it's kind of, let's explore an idea and then he'll craft the narrative around it to kind of bring it to light and make it easier to engage with. I thought it was great. Definitely. Okay. Great read there for, for our listeners. Next up then is, um, if there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be that one thing that you want to have fixed for your role as a marketer today? Um, I think there's a lot of noise in kind of all marketing channels for the most part. Um, I think, I don't know how one could do this, um, but I would love to understand, you know, when I'm interacting with, uh, a stranger, I'd love to understand what their expertise is in a subject. A lot of people are self-described experts and a lot of, and you know, they oftentimes they say brilliant, awesome things. And, and sometimes I think some things they say might be misleading. And then on the flip side, I think some of the folks that might not have the accolades or the other, you know not so great proxies that we take for being a strong voice have really awesome, insightful things to say. We don't give them the platform. So I wish there was some way to kind of flatten that and say like, who's actually spent a lot of time researching and thinking about this, regardless of whatever different proxy or, you know, accolades and awards and speaking engagements they've had in the past, like who's actually thought about this subject, uh, void of that. So I'd love for that to be a kind of a, a separate score of uh you know how much people have invested in the subject uh but yeah wishful thinking yeah i mean you never know right the, the, the future only is is closer than we think right so yeah <laughs> great to hear that um so then um next then is if there's one repetitive task that you could automate gary what would that be uh i hate folding laundry uh i absolutely i don't know why I'm, I'm okay with vacuum cleaning and other chores. I don't like folding laundry. I wish that could be completely automated. I'm sure somebody out there has it. Um, it hasn't been marketed to me effectively yet. Uh, and I'd say in a professional setting, I, I find that a lot of my conversations are, you know, while some of them are in Zoom, a lot of them are in person and there's a lot of, you know, to do items are kind of, you know, my, my brain's working and like, oh, I need to add these five things to my to-do list. And because there's no way to write them down and they're just internal, I wish there was you know, something in my ear that was uh, just capturing the to-do list, uh, to-do items and put them away. I'm going to have to say the same thing, right? And I, I think uh, with with all the devices listening to us at one point, you know, I mean, either yeah. we are to, 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 to keep on letting them and, and help us more or, you know, it's, it's that challenge that we'll see in the next next years, I, I would say. Definitely. Um, and well, well uh, Gary, and well, lastly, I mean, you, you have a lot of experience already, but what is that one piece of advice that you would give yourself if you were to restart your journey as a marketer today? Um, I, I think this is advice that has been given to me and at times I still struggle to, uh, to follow. So I'll kind of say the advice for the great assault is that I'm not great at following it. Um, a lot of folks have told me to, you know, don't forget to enjoy the ride and, and what that a lot of it is 
you know, being a founder, being a marketer, you get to meet new people, you get to learn about new industries, you get to solve real world problems really fast and kind of see, um, you know, that feedback loop tightening and, and get a lot of positive validation and work with smart leaders and, and work with close friends. In my case, my co-founder is a dear friend. So just for kind of taking that outside of the goal of, you know, reaching market, but kind of enjoying the process and, and the doors that it opens. And that's really nice to hear, right? Especially if, if you're doing it with a friend. I mean, I think uh, something that you guys like and, and being friends, I think that goes a long way. So I also have to hear that from you, Gary, some great advice. And well, Gary, we, we are coming to the end of the show today, but before we do end, I do want to give you the last word. If someone forgets everything about the interview today, what is that one thing they should remember about Legal Hat? Sure. Uh, legal Hat is here to help take away all legal compliance and operations work. So if you have anything on your plate that is legal and you don't want to be on your plate, you're probably a good candidate for Legal Hat. There you guys heard it. Put it on autopilot, right? For any legal right. alliance. Uh, hey, Gary, well, thank you so much for, for being with us today. To our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm looking forward to our next episode at Pathmon Presents. Thanks a lot, Gary. Thank you.